this um, this principle. You know, like I think for every single person, believe it or not, I'm gonna tell you what your problem is right now. It's control. We all struggle with control. And we, when we come to the place of brokenness, and we accept the fact that we are powerless in our own flesh, in our own strength, and make ourselves vulnerable to the Lord's property in our hearts, you know, it's, it's when we can admit that we are truly powerless, that's when true healing starts to take place. So tonight, um, Dan and Joe is going to be sharing this, and then... You know, I love this guy, and I'm really excited to see what kind of gems he's going to be sharing with you guys tonight. So thank you guys, and would you join me in welcoming Dan Jones? Thank you guys. I, I, like, I like keeping the worship team up on the stage, because then they feel super awkward just standing there. <laughs> um, my name is Danny. If, you got, if we've never met, uh, please... Come up to me later and shake my hand. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about powerless, and it's it's a it's a topic in celebrate recovery that I always struggled with. Now, I have heard this message eleven. No, this this would have been the eleventh time I've been been part of this ministry for ten years, and every single time I have been always kind of bugging me. And since I was giving the message this time, again. I realized that I should probably kind of work it out and kind of get to a place where I don't disagree with the message that I'm pre presenting. Because um, I don't have a choice. I, you know, there's, we, we have guidelines and, and scriptures that, that Celebrate Recovery and Saddleback Church require us to share because these are the, the passages that the Lord has given to them for us to share with you. But I finally think I got it. So... Tonight is going to be a fun night because I'm really excited to share the revelation that God has given to me about being powerful. So let's pray, and then we're going to get started. So Lord, I thank you. Thank you so much for this ministry. I thank you for the fact that we can come and praise you. We can come and worship you, Lord, that we can come and learn about how to be healed and how to grow, that we can have a place that's safe, where we can find brothers and sisters that we can walk this walk alone, or walk this walk with so we are reminded that we are not alone in this journey. So Lord, I pray that you would open hearts and minds, that you would give me the right words to speak, and that you would take away the words that are not yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So first things first. Everybody go like this with your hands. Go like this a little bit. On the other side. You guys are asking me why am I doing this? Because we have four steps and nine letters in the acrostic. So y'all are gonna be writing fast. So if you if you don't catch on to what I'm saying, it means that you're not listening fast enough, okay? All right, so tonight, principle one, realize that I'm not God, admit that I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing, and that my life is unmanageable. Okay, I can get behind that. That works for me. Happy are those who know that they are spiritually poor. That's Matthew 5, 3. Step one says we admitted that we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives, lives had become unmanageable. Now, this is where the brakes kind of kicked in for me. Because I thought scripture said that God gives us a way out. So how can we be powerless against it? And so tonight, that's what we're going to be discussing, is how can you be powerless, yet empowered to do something at the same time? So the passage that goes with that step is, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. And that's Romans 7, 18. So in principle one, we realized that we are not God. Now for some of us, that took a lot of distance to realize that. Uh, some of us grew up thinking that we were our own God. But as soon as we took that step of realizing that our lives are unmanageable, we immediately changed directions towards healing. Now, I know that that sounds weird and that may sound overly simplified, but it really is that simple. God, think, think about the people that existed 4,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, whatever it is. They weren't people that thought of themselves necessarily as pious people. They were very simple people. Most of them were farmers. 
So God didn't want to make things that was out of reach for them, so he wouldn't do that to us, because it's the same thing that was back then as it is now. So, tonight we're going to focus on four actions. Two things we need to stop doing, and two things we need to start doing. And last week, we went over the first thing that we need to stop doing, which is stop denying the pain. We said that our denial has at least six negative effects. It dis disables our feelings, wastes our energy, negates our growth, isolates us from God, alienates us from relationships, and lengthens our pain. So, when you're ready to accept principle one, you have to realize that pain, the pain is greater than your fear. So in other words, you have to realize that getting through the pain of walking up this journey of changing is greater than your fear. I'm sorry, the pain of living in this cycle that you're in is greater than the fear of change. Psalms 6, verse 2 to 3. David talks about a time when he came to the end of his emotional and physical road. Pity me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, for my body is sick, and I am, set, I am upset and disturbed. My mind is filled with apprehension and with gloom. When David's pain finally surpassed his fear, he was able to face his denial and deal with the reality of his pain. In the same way, if you want to be rid of your pain, you must face it and go through it. There's a story of a pilot once who, he comes on the radio and he says, Hey guys, I've got some bad news. That's not something you want to hear from a pilot. He says, there is a storm in front of us. We've tried to go around it. We've tried to go above it. We've tried to go below it. But there is just no way to do that. So everybody put your seatbelts on. We're going to go straight through it. And you know what? They survived. That's good news, by the way. You guys can be happy about that. <laughs> Alright, so the second action we need to take is stop playing in God. So if you've made the revelation that you're not God, now you have to make the revelation, I can't hold his role in my own life. You're either going to serve God or serve yourself. So Matthew 6, uh, verse 24 it says, no one can be a slave to two masters. He will hate one and love the other. He will be loyal to one and despise the other. As much as we want to think that we are capable of multitasking and able to do all these things, every piece of research shows that when we do too many things at once, all of them lose their quality. God designed us that way because he wanted him to be in place number one in our life. Another term for serving others, or serving ourselves, is serving the flesh. Flesh is the Bible's word for unperfected human nature, or our sinful nature. There's a funny illustration. It says, if you leave the H off the end of flesh and reverse the remaining letters, you spell the word self. Flesh is the life of self. That's what we do when we're left to our own devices. When our self is out of control, that's when we find ourselves in big trouble. So, we're going we're gonna to visit this a couple times tonight. Um, this is one of my favorite tools that I have. Um, I, have I have a smaller one that I have for years. Basically, this thing is designed for drilling holes in concrete or breaking concrete. I have a smaller one, super, super noisy. I mean, to the point where even with earmuffs, it would give you a headache. Right. And it would take forever. Finally, and I was like, you know, I'm going to set aside some money. I'm going to invest in a better tool. Uh, this was back when I was working regularly in construction. And here's the problem. This, imagine, imagine that this is, is yourself. This is the person. Okay? I struggled with this concept of powerlessness because... I'm thinking to myself, dude, this thing is nice. It's, it's powerful. It's got, some, it's got some heft to it. And it's confusing to me when I think about my own self because I'm like, I'm spending all this time reconciling that God made me. So that means I'm God's creation. So how could I be weak and powerless and terrible? I'm a work of art. Like it literally says that I'm a masterpiece, that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. So how am I powerless? But then I realized 
that no matter how cool this tool is, if I try to break this concrete, nothing's gonna happen. Well, no, that's not true. The concrete will break at some point. I can't promise that the concrete will break before this drill will. Now, if I take the battery, put it together the way it was meant to be, if it's loud enough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was asked, exactly. When we allow ourselves to be powered by the true power, and we don't try to do things our own way, we can break through the walls that get in our way. So if that wall, or if that brick was representative of the wall that's between you and the life that you were destined to have because it was in the design that God had created for you, then are you gonna sit there and just bang on it with the tool? There's actually a hysterical video on YouTube. I encourage all of you to find it. It's actually an appropriate video. There's a guy with the corded version of this tool. The thing is a beast. This thing will break through a wall. Well, what happens is, in the video, they go up to this guy and they're filming and they say, hey, how's it going? And clearly this is the new guy on the construction team. And he's like, oh good, and you see like this, this wall, like maybe maybe 20 feet wide, has been chipped off the edge. Well, they're like, hey, show us how you do it. With the corded tool that's not plugged into anything, he starts going like this along the side of the wall. I kid you not, it's the most wonderful video. I show it to any person in construction that I'm training. Always use your brain. But yet, when it comes to our lives, sometimes we don't, right? Yeah. There's a God that we serve that can literally turn this tool from a paperweight to something powerful. There's a God who can take our lives, the, the vessel that he created, and with him, we can get through the things that we need to get through. Number three is start admitting our powerlessness. So now that I've given you permission to say that I am weak, not because I'm not because something's wrong with you. Like this, there's nothing wrong with this tool. But without a battery, you're gonna really waste some time. So start admitting that you are powerless. Or start admitting our powerlessness. The lust of power is not rooted in our strengths, but our weakness. Think about that. When we are desperate for power, it's because it is in that area that we feel weak. We need to realize our human weaknesses and, and quit trying to do it on our own. We need to admit that we're powerless and turn to God. Seriously, there's no reason if you're at a job site and your battery dies to sit there and try to use the tool manually. You go into a different project. You don't try to do that on your own. Matthew says that with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. When we keep doing the things that we don't want to do, and we fail to do the things we've decided we need to do, we need to see that we do not, in fact, have the power to change that we thought we had. So the English version of what that says, <laughs> because that's the way they wrote it. Um, basically, when you realize you can't do it, that's when you have a chance at healing. So number four, start admitting that our lives have become unmanageable. I don't like that one, because just like Mark said earlier, I am a big control freak. I love messing with other people's sense of control. I really do. <laughs> when I have a worship team, <laughs> I typically hand them their music when they walk into the, walk into the church that, that day. <laughs> because then they have no control over anything. Stress is not really that, but you know what? I get to work with some of the best musicians in the world because... I can throw anything at them at any time, or God can change the whole thing in an instant, and they can go with it. So, I, on the other hand, don't like to be on their side. So that's why this one is hard for me. Because anytime something feels unmanageable, I feel like I need to just buckle down, grab tighter, and say, no, I'm gonna control this. And that's when things really get out of hand, because I'm not strong enough to hold things. Psalm 40 verse 12 says, the problem, or problems 
far too big for me to solve, are piled higher than my head. Meanwhile, my sins, too many to count, have all caught up with me, and I'm ashamed to look up. How many of you guys have felt that way before? How many of you guys have felt like the wall is falling down behind you? <laughs> Sometimes it really is. <laughs> yeah. So tonight's a cross week. <laughs> now that we're halfway done, um, how are this? Can we can we stop and give a clap for those people out there? Yeah. How many times do you guys feel like in life that nobody pays attention to the good you do, but then as soon as something goes wrong, <laughs> that's what happens in sound, in, in pro presenter, in lights. As soon as the power goes off, everybody blames them. As soon as the sound goes funky, everybody looks up at them. But when everything sounds good, they're like, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. See, I get the opposite. Like, if something goes wrong up here while I'm on stage, like, if I don't remember the words, so I mouth it, they get blamed. So, <laughs> just kidding. That's just my secret. So, P. <laughs> We're getting far off topic. Pride ends and fall. While well, humility brings honor. Uh, sorry, the P, that was P for pride. There we go. Um, ignorance plus power plus pride is a deadly mixture. Imagine the leader of a powerful country who is ignorant, powerful, and prideful. Imagine what would happen Imagine what would happen on the world stage. Now, for the record, just saying, in case you guys are trying to draw conclusions, I always say pray for your president. I don't care who it is. I never make any negative remarks about the president, regardless of my personal beliefs. So if you're laughing, I'm talking about, I've been watching this great TV show about a new president and how he has to deal with other countries, where some of them are very prideful, very powerful, and very ignorant. So, please don't think I'm talking about our own president. So, the next thing that we, the next thing that happens is we begin to lose our only ifs. Okay, so I struggle with this one. They needed the acrostic to work, but it doesn't. So, in your brain, imagine that we flipped it this way, or because this way, because it's actually if only. But yeah. So, what I mean is. Have you ever had the, call, uh, the case of the only ifs, which is, I'm just gonna flip it around for you guys. If only they hadn't walked out, or if only I had stopped drinking. If only this, if only that. I hate to tell you this, but it's done. It yeah. happened. Get over it. Let's move on. If you're still hurting from stuff, I get it, we can walk through that, but stop sitting there and festering in what is uh, what's unchangeable and in the past? Oh, I'm losing my page. All right. Luke 12, verse 2 to 3 tells us, Whatever is covered up will be uncovered, and every, se every secret will be made known, so that whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in broad daylight. It's funny that they say that right before the next letter, because when I read that, it makes me really nervous. So I think all of the stupid things that I did hidden are going to be shown one day. But here's the good thing is the next letter is W for worry. <laughs> we used to say here, don't tell me worrying doesn't work, because it does. But look at him like, what? Because how many times do the things you start worrying about actually end up happening? Very few of them, right? Because worrying works. For those of you who don't catch on, it is a joke where it doesn't work. We just worry about things that are not really under our control in the first place. So, the next thing, it says, uh, <laughs> worrying is not from God. By going through the steps here at Celebrate Recovery, you actually have the chance to let go of the worry in a, in a as, as much as this sounds like an infomercial, as in a step-by-step -step way. You really get the chance to get rid of the things that have burdened, or burdened you in a way that is piece at a time, so it's no longer trying to throw off everything at once, because that can be really scary. 
So Matthew 6, 34 says, Don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of, tomorrow, of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. The next thing that happens when we admit our powerless is we quit trying to escape. How many of you guys still have an escape right now? Don't lie. It's a video game, it's a food, it's a, it's a sport, it's a something, yeah? Okay, if you don't, that's okay. We'll call it celebrate for raise your escape, which would be a good one. <laughs> I'm serious, that's a good escape, you should come here. You can hear great messages. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> before we admitted we were powerless, we tried to escape and hide from our hurts and habits. And our hands. By getting involved in unhealthy relationships, using drugs or alcohol, <coughs> by eating or not eating, and so forth. Trying to escape the pain drains, of, drains us of precious energy. When we take the first step, though, it opens us up to the true escape. Ephesians 5, verse 13. I, mean, I think I might have given it to them wrong. I think it's actually showing us. Sorry, guys. Um, so, for the light is capable of showing us everything for what it really is. It is possible for the light to turn the thing it shines upon into light also. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you saw somebody with a stick of darkness? Yeah. That would be the opposite of a flashlight. Um, there's no such thing. There's no way I could bring a device that could create darkness in you. The only thing that can come is light. So, I once was told that darkness actually doesn't exist. It's simply an absence of light. So when you're staring down the barrel of a gun, or when you're staring at your, your, the things that have hurt you, the things that you are, have been stuck in, I get that they're real, but are they really, really real? And I say that I get that they're real because I don't want you to think that I have not been there. I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm like, I get over it, you, you're lame. Because I, I, I understand hurt. I understand what, what, what it's like to feel like being dead would be a lot easier. I understand what it's like when, you, when you're lying on your back and you're waking up in the morning, or I guess really late morning, thinking, how am I going to get through this day so I can get back to this bed? So I understand that, and I, and I don't want you to think that I'm callous to that, but I want you to not give that thing so much power. Because I used to give it all my power and all my strength. I give it everything I had. But the reality of it is, all I was experiencing was an absence of light, not true darkness. The R in powerless stands for resentments. So, if they're allowed to fester, resentments can act like an emotional cancer. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. I have a friend... Very special young friend was speaking with them and, and was realizing that their family was crazier than I had initially understood. And I was expressing to this person that no, 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 you're not nearly as broken as you think. Your your family is a lot more special, and you should definitely find ways to get yourself separated from them a little bit. I was not encouraging this friend to go and confront the crazy in her family. That passage right now in this place of sober recovery is not telling you to go and leave this, this place tonight and go deal with the person who hurt you or the person that you're mad at. We'll get there. I know that this scripture says don't let the sun go down, but for our purposes tonight, we are going to call that metaphorical. So please do not go after the person because I'm going to tell you what. When this person confronted crazy... They ended up with more crazy because this person was not prepared emotionally nor with the proper tools to handle a confrontation like the one that they needed to do. So with that, please don't leave here saying, oh, Danny said that I'm, I need to not let the sun go down, so I'm pissed at you, and this is why. No, please, please don't. 
Um, as you continue to work the principles, you will come to understand that in letting go of your resentments by offering your forgiveness to those that have hurt you, you're not just freeing the person who harmed you, but you're freeing you. You ever had somebody apo apologize to you or ask you for forgiveness or uh, confront you on something you didn't even know you did? I mean, if it hasn't happened to you, it's happened to me, and it's really weird. Like, I've made people mad or offended or hurt, and I had no idea. I, partially because, as you can probably imagine, I talk a lot, in, even in real life. Um, <laughs> careful, Joe. But, the thing is, that's just life. You know, when there's multiple oxen, work can be done faster, but when there's oxen, they also produce something after they eat. It smells bad. So, that's life. When you deal with people around you, they're gonna get hurt. So sometimes you don't even know that you've hurt them. Sometimes people have hurt you and you don't even, and they don't even realize it until you get the chance to share with them, hey, what you did actually hurt. And like I said, we'll get to that place. The next level, or the next letter in uh, powerlessness is loneliness. When you admit that you're powerless and start to face reality, you'll find that you do not have to be alone. Do you guys know that loneliness is a choice? You can be in a crowded room and feel like the loneliest person around. And did you know that caring for the lonely can cure loneliness? So, this is a shameless pitch. Come help serve it, so it recovery. We have lots of space for you. <laughs> Hebrews 13 says, Continue to love each other with true brotherly love. Don't forget to be kind to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without even realizing it. We're going to be a tiny bit over, but not nearly as over as I expected. Okay, so, when you admit that you're powerless, you give up another E, which is the emptiness. And to me, that's one of the best things to give up, because there's nothing worse than feeling like your whole world is going to implode because there's nothing inside of you. When you finally admit that you're truly powerless by yourself, that empty feeling deep inside, that cold wind that blows through you will go away. Jesus said, my purpose is to give you life in all its fullness. The next thing you'll notice is that you are becoming less self-centered. That the first S in, uh, stands for selfishness. <laughs> People that have come through these doors, they come in believing that the Lord's Prayer was, Our Father, who art in heaven, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> give me, yeah. In case you guys, it doesn't say that. Luke 17, 33 tells us, Whoever clings to his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life shall save it. One of the many frustrating things about the Lord is that his math is completely opposite from ours. Simply said, selfishness at the heart of the mo or is at the heart of most problems between people. And the last letter is something that we get, uh, something that we the last thing that we give up. Sorry, when we admit that we are powerless, is separation. Some people talk about finding God as if He was the one who was lost. Separation from God can feel real, but it's never permanent. Remember that He seeks the lost. When we can't find him, we need to ask ourselves, who actually moved? There was once, um, I was on, when I was on my stay post vacation, I was starting to, oh, jail, it was a jail. I was starting to feel really sad and really down and just things were not going right for me. And I remember asking the Lord, I was like, God, where are you? You completely left me. The next morning I woke up, I've never experienced fear and paranoia and anxiety like that in my life. I went through the whole day thinking that everybody was trying to kill me, whether or not that was real, I don't know. The following day I woke up and everything was different. There was almost a tangible peace in, my, in, in myself. And I remember thinking, okay, so two days ago I was just whining because I couldn't find you but you were there. Yesterday, you actually pulled back, so I knew what it would be like without you. But today you're back. I remember going into the chapel and just falling on my knees and, and sobbing because 
I realized that I never wanted to live a life of perfect health. I only had one day with it, or without it. But I've never experienced fear and emptiness like that. So I want to encourage you, if you are in a place where you feel like you're separated from, the, from God and His love, you're not. My favorite book of the Bible is Romans. My favorite chapter is Romans 8. And these are, one of, and these are uh, two of my favorite passages from chapter 8. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from His love. Death can't. Life can't. Angels won't. And all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ when He died for us. The power to change only comes from God's grace. So my question to you is, are you ready to give up are you ready to say that I could be useful, useful in this world? I could be something because God created me to be. But I can't do it without His power. Right. For years and years and years, I thought that I could. And then I hit a giant wall, fell off a cliff, found myself in a ravine realized that God's rope was the only one down there. And so if you're not that far down yet, I really encourage you to reach out to the Lord before you find yourself in a position where he or where that rope is the only thing left. Because the problem with that is the relationships around you if you haven't experienced it yet will be damaged sometimes irreparably. But the great news is God is God no matter what we are doing. So tonight, I want to encourage you that if you fear being powerless, give it a short shot. Don't, don't say, this is forever. Say, God, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some time. You make, you make up the time. I'm going to give you total power. And for that period of time, you can't turn back. You just got to give it a shot. I can, I can make that bet with you guys because my God has never failed. No matter how much I fail, my God has never failed. So give it a shot. I want to pray with you and then we'll close because we're, we made it to that way over that I was afraid of. So Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for being a God who powers us to be who it is that you made us to be. The profoundly confusing idea that you made us and then you say that we're powerless without you. But with you, we can do all things. So we thank you for that, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So one last thing before I dismiss you guys. Only problem is, if you don't know who Jesus is, you don't got a battery to plug in. So, if you've never encountered the love of God, if you've never given your life to Jesus, or given your life to God, and declare Jesus as your Lord, then I want to give you that opportunity. So, um, you bow your heads, you can keep your heads up, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray a prayer with you guys first, and then we'll end. So I want you guys all to repeat after me. Lord, thank you, thank you for tonight. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your Son to die for me, someone who is a sinner. I ask that you would come into my life. Fill me with your spirit. Change me from the inside out. I give you permission to be Lord. And I ask you to be saved. I give my life to you from here on out. To Jesus' name. So really quick, if anybody prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to be brave. Uh, if that was the first time you prayed it and meant it, I want you to stick your hand up right now. If, all right. Anybody else? All right, well, 
Um, thanks for bearing with us. That was a lot of notes that you took. Sorry if you have carpal tunnel now. Please blame Justin Mark. I didn't assign this uh, one tonight. Um, thanks for coming. Go to group. We'll see you next week.